Okay, let me talk about the first algorithm we're going to use to infer the hidden states from a sequence of observations in a hidden Markov model. And this is called Bayes filtering. So the goal is to estimate the probability of being in a particular state, we'll say state j, at time i, or we'll say time t, given all of the observations up to that point. All right. Now to make this a little bit more concrete, let me show you what the result is going to be on the robot localization. So here I'm plotting as the blue dot, the actual, the ground truth, we would say, the ground truth location that I know it's supposed to be. Uh, but given the observed scans up to this point in time, I have a distribution of the probabilities that, that I'm at a particular state in the map. As so you can see, when the blue dots over here, you know, it's much more likely that I'm in this section of the map. Now the blue dots moving down here, it's most, much more likely that I'm in this section of the map. Now, there's some noise, and so there's a little bit of ambiguity, so you'll notice that it gets a little bit confused about which hallway it's actually in, depending on um, how noisy it is. It's maybe confusing these two hallways. But yeah, that's the problem. I want to be able to make a heat map like this. I want to know what is the probability of any state at a particular moment in time, given all the observations I've had up to that moment in time. So to write this as a probability, um, I can say, what is the probability that my state at time t, so I'll say xt, so that's my hidden variable, or maybe I'll use a random notation here. So xt, that the state at that particular time is equal to um, my state j, we'll say. So what is the probability that I'm actually in state j at time t, given all the observations up to this point? So that would be y zero, y one, so we'll say zero indexed here, all the way up to y. Okay, so let me define this as the belief for shorthand. So I'll say the belief at index time index t of being in state j is defined to be, so I'll put a little dot over this, defined to be this probability. So just a little shorthand to help me. Now let me try to break this down a little bit and, and it'll, I'll show you a way to compute it based on that. So, so really what we got to remember or, or notice is that hidden Markov model is basically just the Markov chain plus Bayes rule. Because you know you only depend on where you just were, that's the Markov property. But we don't observe what actually what we want. We, we have an observation but, but the true state is hidden and, and Bayesian framework is how we've dealt with that so far. So that's exactly what we're going to apply here. So let me try to write this in a Bayes rule way. So what I would say is B sub T of J. So, so this probability here is equal to, well, first it's the prior probability of being in that state at that time. So it's the probability of, of being um, in this state. Maybe I'll just say J for short. So I'll index the states by numbers. So the probability that I'm in state J at time T, that is, is like the prior probability. Um, so this is, oops, I guess I'll just put text here. This is the prior. But then I also have um, the likelihood when I was talking about Bayesian stuff before. So this is times the probability of all the observations up to this time. So this is the likelihood um, given that xt is, and so this, this term here is called the prior, and this term here is called the likelihood, if you remember, when we were talking about the Bayesian stuff. And then in the denominator, we have the evidence, which let me just pull out what I need here. This is just the joint probability of, of making all these observations. So this is called the evidence down here. And actually one thing I'm gonna do straight off the bat to simplify this a little bit is go back to the graphical model for a hidden Markov model and notice that 
Um, this observation only depends on the state right here. So the observation at time n only depends on the hidden state at time n. And so I'm going to wave my hands a little bit. Um, if you want, you know, the, fu the full formal derivation here um, is in this document, but here I'm just going to give you as much intuition as I can. But, but basically I'll be able to simplify this as just to the probability that, that yt um, give the probability that, that we make a particular observation given the state that we're in right now. Somehow this observation does not depend, this observation only depends on on the state at that time. It does, it's conditionally independent given this of all the other states. Okay, so so that's that's that. So I can simplify that a little bit, but yeah, this is this is just the Bayesian framework, right? So okay, I kind of know what to do with my likelihood term. This is my observation model. This this is you know this is like what I was seeing with what I was showing you in the last robot video. So this is like okay, given my idealized state scan, how likely is it that I would have made this observation um, if I had this ideal scan at that location? So this is something you've got to define yourself. It's problem specific what 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 this probability is. But say you know if you have a good model. This is where you would plug that in. Okay, but I have to do a little bit more work now to tell you what is the prior probability of being in a particular state at a particular time um, in the context of a hidden Markov model. Now to get that prior probability, we're gonna actually think recursively or inductively in terms of the state that we were just in before we got to state J at time T. So what I'll do here is I'll plot so on this axis here, I'm going to plot the possible states. And this will be um, all the states at time t minus 1, and this will be all the states at time t. And so, you know, you could be in any of the states at time t minus 1 or any of the states at time t. That's, that's what I have in the model here. So I'm interested in, in the probability that you end up in state j at time t. Now you could have come from anywhere, potentially, uh, at the time before that. But remember, because of the Markov assumption, uh, where I am at the time before that completely determines where I end up at this time. I don't need to know anything further in the past. So if I knew, know where I was at time t minus one, then I know everything I need to know about the probability of ending up at state j at time t. So let's suppose that I was at state k at time t minus 1. Then I could model the transition probability that um, my state at time t is j given that my state at time t minus 1 is k. And so this is something that I have to model. So I have my observation model, but I'm also going to need my transition model another thing that's problem specific. Uh, maybe what I'll do here is draw this a particular color so it stands out a little bit. And so that is a probability that I will need to know. And that's great. So, so this is the transition probability from state K to, to state J in my transition model. But also, um, if I had recursively kept track of the belief at time t minus 1 of state k, so, you know, I'm going to recursively maintain the belief. And I'll say, okay, I, let me assume that I had computed the belief at time t minus 1. How would I use that to update the belief at time t over all the states? And so what I'm going to do is, so maybe I'll, I'll write this term in, in red here. And so actually the prior, so not knowing anything else, um, the prior is related to these two terms, the belief at the last time of a particular state times the transition probability from that state to the state that I'm in now. And actually I can come from anywhere. I don't just have to come from that particular state K I can come from any other state 
and each of these states is disjoint, so I can actually just sum these probabilities together. So what I would say then is it's the sum over all k of these terms here. So the product of the belief at time t minus 1 of state k times the transition probability from state k at t minus 1 to state j at time t. So this is actually what my prior looks like. So that whole mess there. So if I go and I substitute that in, the numerator is actually going to be all this. So it'll be sum over k of bt um, b t minus 1 of k times p x t equals j given x t minus 1 equals k. So we sum up all of those probabilities. That's the prior. And then we multiply by the observation probability, the likelihood of observing a particular observation given that we're in state j. So that's, that's how we compute the numerator of the belief. Um, let me just focus on the numerator now, actually. And, and let me focus on, on this particular term here. So this term is quite interesting by itself, just the transition probability, just, just the prior transition probability times the belief. It's what would happen to the belief if you knew nothing else about the observation. So if I made all the observations up to time t minus 1 and I knew nothing else, this term would give me um, the propagation of the belief to the next time. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, if I go to my notes here on the robot stuff, or actually on the hidden Markov models, um, let's say that I started off at the beginning of time absolutely certain that the robot was here. Um, if I did not know anything else and I just had a Markov chain and I didn't have a new observation come in, this is what this term would give me. So every state would kind of diffuse out to its neighbors. So the probability that this state would go left, right, up, and down. And the probability is those states would go left, right, up, and down. And, and you get this diffusion of the probability out across all of the states. So that's just this term by itself. So that's just doing the transitions without incorporating the observations. But if we can incorporate the observations, we can actually do a little update and an up weight. We can actually um, put a larger weight on the states that are more in accordance with the observation. So we still do the transition, but, but then right away, we multiply it by this other term over here. We multiply it by this term to update the probability based on the observation. So what I would like to try to do now is see if I can apply this equation to the robot. And then I'll explain how to deal with, we're, we're just missing the term here in the denominator. I'll explain how to deal with that in a moment. But, but the numerator is, is the trickier part. So let me just show you how to put that in code. So I'll keep the equation down here and I'll see if I can match it up in the code here. Um, actually, let me update my variable here. So this is going to indicate, t is going to indicate time. So let me be fully consistent with the indices that I use there. Um, okay, and actually, let me make this a little bit clearer too. So I'll say this is the number of states. I'll call it num states instead of k. So actually, to start this whole thing off, I mean, I gave you the recursive update rule here. But actually, for anything recursive or inductive, we need a base case or a stopping condition. Um, in this case, we're going to start off assuming that um, every state is equally likely at the beginning. So we have an equal probability of being in any state before we see any observations. Um, now the first observation comes in, and what do we do? Okay, so here's where I'm going to apply this formula. So I'll go through each state for j in range um, num states. All right, and so what I need to do is, is first compute the transition probabilities or compute the prior. 
So this is transition times prior belief across all neighboring states. So this could be over all possible states. It, it, you know, in general, it's possible that I could transition from any state to any other state. Um, in this problem, I'm going to restrict my transition model. Remember, I have to model this, this transition probability here. I'm going to restrict um, my transition model to be equal probability to all direct neighbors that are up, down, left, or right. So I'm not gonna let you just jump anywhere. I'm gonna make it so that you only transition to the neighbors that are directly adjacent to you. And so here I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let K then just go over the neighbors of J. And actually I've already stored that information in an array here. Um, that's part of the object. So I'll go through all those. And now what I want to do is compute the transition probability. So the transition probability, I said it's, it's going to be an equal probability to all direct neighbors. So it's just going to be one over the number of neighbors at k. So I'm transitioning out of k to j. j is one of this number many states coming out of k. And so this is the probability of doing that transition. Um, I need to also multiply that by the probability of the belief at state k, right? So, so that's, that's actually the, the first term there. Um, so the belief at, at the last time of k times the transition probability. So that would be the belief at state k, what it was last time. And actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to define a new variable called g. This is a temporary variable that's going to store the probability I'm working on over at this time over all the states. And what I'll do is, is I'll actually accumulate this in G. So I'll say G at J, I just, I'm going to sum in this new term, this new possibility that I come from K and modulate it by that transition probability. Then once I'm finished, I need to uh, multiply by the observation likelihood. So the observation probability so I'll say, okay, you know, the belief at state J is the prior from transitioning times the um, observation, or what was it, get measurement probability. Um, given that I'm in state J, so this would be states, or uh, I already forgot what to call it. It was state scans, state scans at index J. Um, given that I'm in that state, what is the probability that I observed my observed scans at time t, given this amount of measurement noise that I have? Um, and now, okay, finally, I'm going to incorporate the denominator here. So remember, I was missing the denominator uh, for the evidence. That actually I can just obtain by um, summing up all the elements in G. So you just divide G by the sum of all the, all the elements. And so this, this is like, if I go back to the, to the Bayes rule thing, it's like, you know, let's say I had this three class problem here. It's like, okay, I'm restricting myself to a particular observation, the observation that I'm broken. Here's all the ways that a Mac can be broken. Here's all the ways that a PC can be broken. And here's all the ways that a Linux computer can be broken. And these dark rectangles here are the things that I computed in the numerator. And then the denominator in the Bayesian framework is just the sum of all those dark things. So, so notice that that sum is the same no matter what goes in the numerator, and it's the sum over all the possible numerators. And so in code, that's, that's just simply g um, is equal to g over the sum of g. Okay, and then, and then once that's done, Actually, that, that should happen after the loop, after I filled in um, all the Gs here. Then, actually, that is going to be the updated belief. So that's it. I have all the terms. I've got the numerator and the denominator. And I have propagated my belief from the last time step and updated it by the observation here. 
and then I've normalized the probabilities to sum to one, which is just dividing by the overall evidence. Okay, is this gonna work? I don't know, let's see. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make an at that kind of animation that I was showing a moment ago. And let's see what it looks like. So this GIF file pops up and there is what I get. And actually this is a little bit better than what I showed before because the observation has a little bit less noise. Um, but you know, there's still some uncertainty. It's not sure if it's moving forward or backwards. So it kind of maintains some, some probabilities around there. Um, just to show you what happens if I dial up the noise a little bit, let's make alpha four. And we'll see here that um, it's gonna take a second to generate that. But we'll see that, that it gets a lot less certain. So I'll run this again. And now the scans are much noisier. They're like, um, they're like they were down here, like very noisy. But there's still some signal there and, and we, can, we can use that signal over time. Okay, so now let's see, can I tell that I'm much less certain? Yeah, see it's spreading out a lot more. And, and this is where I don't even fully know if I'm in that hallway. So you, you know, you have an uncertainty that's proportional to the amount of noise in your observation. But I would argue this still works pretty well given how crappy, how absolutely crappy these scans are. <laughs> so that is a Bayes filter in a nutshell. Um, and just, you know, to show you another example, there could be a lot of ambiguity if there's a lot of symmetry in your state space. So here you can see it, you know, there's a lot of possible hallways that I could be in. And, and so that's something to be aware of. There, there are certain models of probability that do not work well in, in a highly symmetric state space. So it was kind of crucial that we were able to maintain multiple hypotheses here because we were never quite sure which one it was. Oh, and also to give Marcos Maciel a shout out because he made a cool example a couple years ago. Um, with CS here. This is a great example because it had the symmetries but eventually it got a little more certain as we went on. Okay, so that's a base filter. Now, the next step is going to be um, another problem. So rather than this question of, of a, you know, a heat map or the probability, the belief at a particular time, I'm gonna ask a different question is, if I give all the measurements to you, can you give me the sequence of states with the highest probability? But before I do that, I need to review dynamic programming. This is something that, that many people have seen in data structures already, but, but I want to review it first. So that is what is up next.